we are live. Woo! Gosh, um, my goodness. So we've already had a bit of chatter in the chat tonight from oh, from Ed and Usher. <laughs> <laughs> I was just just oh. telling Ed that the Elite Raw fan club is not a thing. Absolutely a thing. That merchandise <laughs> and everything. There's t-shirts. Yeah, I've seen them. They do exist. It's not helpful if if you're the only one. Or your daughters are the only one in the fan club. <laughs> we are a legion of one. <laughs> excellent, oh, excellent. Man. So how's everyone doing? Yeah. yeah. Pretty good. Yeah. A good couple of yeah. weeks. And, uh, of course, we've got back with us again. we got Kira. Hello. Yay. Welcome back, Kira. We, we didn't put you off last time, then. No, not yet. I'll give you I'll give you one more week. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Please anyone can put you off, in. it's us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, so how are we feeling about Cortar Station? You're not on board uh, the Alcubier anymore, so, you know, that's going to be good. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. Definitely a bonus. Great mood because it's a non uberth class vessel. Yeah. 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 But, yeah, a Kling a Klingon space station of the damned. I I'm... I'm feeling slightly better about it, considering most people are dead already. I, yeah. was, a little, I was a little concerned that um, they would be le less dead and it would be a lot more painful. Yeah, I was worried. Yeah. I, but I, I, didn't, I didn't think Stu would drop me in the deep end on my first one, so... Oh, I figured yeah. Stu probably would. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I oh, I'm totally. Too that's nice a, that's a me move. Nice me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured he would as well. It would be like, she's going to play with us, so let's just make it as bad as possible and see if, if she sticks through that, then maybe she'll stick around. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, level that's, only. that's totally me. Totally me. And uh, we, we didn't hear much from Ed in the last game, of course, because, uh, well, we didn't hear much from Elin Rahl, I should say. No, he's uh, he's sat very comfortably on on his um, on the bridge of his new starship. Uh, <laughs> don't tell Captain. I did. Said that she's still asleep. Hopefully. Um, so yeah. I talked to you with comms. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm always I'm always here in the ether. Never more than a quick com badge away. Um, <laughs> but I'm uh, I'm also I still need to try and find a convincing set of Andorian antennas and some blue face paint. <laughs> uh, but how is how is uh Raul feeling about the responsibility the weight of all the lives of the starship this is, crew this is new territory shoulders. it's new territory for all because he's he's had to literally hand over responsibility to varon for the uh, for, for the first time i mean we've seen them work as a pair together on the Alcubia and now he's literally got to step back and say you've got to run this and I've got to and I have to stay back here and uh, and, and stay with the, stay with the ship um, I mean there is uh, there's always there's always plenty of chance to do the Kirk thing and rip <laughs> one shirt and run into the transporter beam but um, not by this point not by the 2380s I don't think no <laughs> regulations are a lot tighter <laughs> Jesus. Diplomacy first. Diplomacy <laughs> first. And, and speaking of being diplomatic, um, how is Varon finding being the executive officer? I'm pretty sure he's never going to be that again after this mission. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think Varon is probably way less uncomfortable by it than I am. Because uh, me <laughs> as Usher, I am completely nervous about it uh but you know whatever it is what it is i, I won't tell you how much matt paid me to make you in that position <laughs> mm. <laughs> well funnily enough i was gonna ask does bosch feel he's been kind of stepped over um no i think i i think there was probably a little like pang to start with um but considering he's chief medical officer, I don't think it makes a huge amount of sense to be first officer as well. I, I, I actually don't know what the regulations are on, on that sort of thing, but I think there's there's probably a um, uh, a, a division of labour that uh, can't be stepped on. Well, canonically in Star Trek, uh, anyone, even an ensign, it seems, can be a first officer. So it's not that special. It's fine. 
<laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. And and Davok, of course, as a Vulcan, Davok mm. wouldn't have any ambition or wouldn't worry about any of this, or or does he? No, he's just getting on with the job. Yeah. Science! He likes his science. He loves the science. That will, well, loves a strong word. <laughs> Gonna, he does gonna the science. science the shit out of this. He has a respectful appreciation for the science. Yes, science <laughs> is science. Yes, yeah, science must yeah. be done. It's logical. Mm. There's going to be a lot of science trying to figure out what the fuck is going on on this station. And mm. uh, and observing all these Federation humans and. Trill and Vulcans and Ferengi and Andorians Ugh. and God knows what else. We have uh, we have Major de Gorch Dazes. Yep. Um, what's what's the major's view on all these these humans and and are the, are they the efficient Starfleet crew that you would expect? Well, she wasn't expecting much. <laughs> And she wasn't disappointed. <laughs> no, she thinks she's a. Uh, she's just of the mind that let's uh, just you know getting involved, sticking their nose in. But they're here now, so just got to deal with it. So. I mean, it's pretty lucky that we stuck our nose in. Your ship was literally falling apart. Yeah, thanks for saving my life, but you can go now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I was like, I was like, it didn't seem like you were doing much better. <laughs> you never know. Could be. We'll find out. Well, do you know what? That's probably an excellent place for us to do our recap to bring us up to speed as to where we are. And as ever, we do it via a log please go ahead okay uh klingon defense force log recorded under security log green 832 hasperat hodar de gorg deserves reporting on this day 39 in the year of kls 1006 acting on the information received from hakak in the klingon imperial intelligence division i have managed to acquire a vessel and make my way to Kortar station I trust Hakat completely, which raises a lot of questions about why I would not have been involved in the activities here, given my experience and knowledge. The ship broke apart upon arrival, being little more than a garbage scow, but, un but fortunately, Starfleet's interference in matters that do not concern them paid off for once, and they were able to beam me out before I joined with the prophets and honored dead in Stovacor. I must get to the bottom of what is going on and determine exactly what the Federation is doing here too. I cannot be sure how they will react to the information I carry, nor my reasons for being here, so I must employ caution at all times, particularly given the nature of this enemy to the Empire. The Starfleet crew have been somewhat useful in helping access the station logs, where we discovered that the parasite seemed to have come on board via the filthy tellerites that shuttled back and forth between here and the Cordelan system. They also gained access to the infirmary, where the parasitic beings have been used to genetically alter the Klingon warriors we found within. This points to dark times, to say the least. For now, it seems I must keep close to these Federation puppets if I am to make my way to the Cordelin system and hopefully to the root of this. Prophet's willing, though, I do not find myself surrounded on all sides by the dishonorable and untrustworthy. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Well, there was a lot of Very backhanded nicely. compliments there. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some outright just anger. Um, so, so we left uh, our our heroes, uh, for want of a better term, uh, in the infirmary. Not a good turn, of course. Uh, surrounded by dead Klingons. What, as ever, would you like to do? I I don't I don't really remember what we're. Well, I, I've been, yeah, I, I've been scanning all of them. So we picked up a load of extra information on them ripping uh, the parasites out of the backs of their necks, um, and we cordoned one off, didn't we? While yeah, uh, Kira, uh, uh, while. The yeah, what? Yeah, the major was uh, was torching all of the others. Yeah. 
we we yeah. agreed that that was the acceptable course of action to take. Yeah. I'll remind you. Yeah, I had to I had to yeah. beg Major D bag there to <laughs> let me keep one alive. <laughs> so I want that to be my name forever. <laughs> uh, no, so we were scanning the one that was alive, and then we agreed to uh, to basically torch all the other ones. Um, and then after we get our scan and we save our data, um, we will burn that one yeah. as well. I, um, just to be absolutely clear, there is not one that is alive. Yeah. No, all, no. The, uh, we we kept a body. Uh, there's one that there's one that was in slightly more pieces, uh, uh, sort of less pieces. Yes. Yes. No, none of I, them were alive. I believe that was the doctor, wasn't it? Yeah. He had a knife in his back, but apart from that, he was fine. He did indeed. That's um, and, yeah, yeah. That's no. self-inflicted. Na natural, natural, natural causes. Natural causes. Knife in the back. <laughs> natural causes. Na knife in the back. Uh, there was just that, as there a was that movie. Sorry. That's okay. Um, I was yeah, just, just going to say it. there was some. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm done. <laughs> Tell us about the movie after. Um, so. Um, there, just as a quick reminder as to what your scans have found um, obviously the Klingons themselves appear to be in a de-evolved state with um, thick exoskeletons some of them have got tusks some of them appear to be, have spines coming out of their backs um, yes the ones being vaporised have all had these parasites kind of dug out or, or chopped into pieces in their actual necks. But the parasites themselves appear to be bulkier and to have something of an exoskeleton themselves. They're definitely not the standard parasites you've come across in the past. These aren't your mother's parasites. <laughs> yeah. These aren't just any parasites. These are MS. <laughs> yeah. Other parasites are available. <laughs> yes. This is not sponsored by MS. <laughs> <laughs> MS if MS wants to send us some Percy pigs, I Yes, please. Percy happy. pigs are great. Oh, yes. I could definitely get rid of some of those. Um, were we able to we were able to get some scientific information out of the body that's remaining or is that something we still yet to do? Is it a bit speaking like... Entirely from, speaking entirely from back on the ship here, just wondering aloud. No, it's, it's, that was kind of the same thing. I, I assumed it was more like the Kerbal space program kind of data, where it's just when it like... it explodes, we've got some more data, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We can just keep that data. <laughs> um, uh, it doesn't blow up next time. If Commander Bosch would like to make a reason and medicine check uh, with his medical tricorder, uh, this is going to be difficulty two. Okay, I have a reason of ten and a medicine of five. Do you want to add some more dice? Have you got anything that will help you out there? Are you bold or cautious in your medicine? Um, actually, I've got medicine, chemicals, triage, infectious disease, field medicine? Not going to cut it here, I'm afraid. Something like xenobiology would be helpful to you. Yeah, no, I've got... Hey. If only we had a xenobiologist. Hey. If only I'm you a did. But do I want to help you, though? <laughs> do you? Uh, I will assist. You will assist. Okay. Uh, so you can also make a reason and medicine check. Um, oh, gosh. Have you got my um, my sheets, Stu? I do. Uh, you are looking for uh, 11 or under on a single D20. Is it worth it? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I will roll. My online roller is not working. Hey! <laughs> I rolled a zero. <laughs> That's not a thing. I got four. I got a four. There you go. Four. 
that. Four. Nice. Fantastic. Um, Good. Good, because I got a nine and a 20. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. So, uh, I said difficulty two, didn't I? But you yeah. do get a complication. Um, unfortunately, your medical tricorder blows up. up. It's oh. basically. Um, you got one of those uh, Sony ones with those lithium batteries in it. <laughs> It's uh, perhaps it just can't handle the information that it's received because it can't handle just the before truth. it sputters and dies, you're pretty sure you're reading Klingon DNA from the remains of the parasite. Hmm. And he sent his findings to uh, the Livingston. Now that his tricorder is dead, can we just like hand him another one? <laughs> uh, no, it was a medical tricorder, and none of you are carrying a medical tricorder. Uh, yeah, so. no, it's uh, it's packed up. I'm going to have to take the uh, do a direct connection to download the, the stored data. I can't access it, but it seemed to be that the parasite not only was it changing the Klingon host, it looks like the Klingon host was changing the parasite. Hmm. Making them more um, symbiotic, primal. It's, yeah, it's a definitely a worrying. Yeah, it's not a. Uh. Well, the uh, the parasites. When we're thinking back to when we scanned them with the Romulans, uh, did we would we have noticed any Romulan DNA in the parasites at that point? Davik thinks. Uh, there were certainly none that you were aware of. Mm. Um, but notably, the parasites that you'd scanned previously conform to Starfleet's um, biological specifications for them. These right. don't. These are. Mm. How do they deviate? Mutated. Yeah. Deviates. Is there any way we can work out? Oh, that's Bosch. If if it is mutated, is it was it mutated on purpose? Was this something that happened randomly, or was this something that was put into them? Is there any way to find that out? Uh, possibly, but we'd have to use the um, uh, uh, the station's. Um, uh, scanning equipment and my, my Klingon's a little rusty. Well, I need to help again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to mention this to Rawl uh, via the communicator and say it might... I'm thinking if it is that it was mutated, it might be good to have proof of that. Are you? Uh, do you have any information you, you're able to send us over, Mr. Varum? So we're getting nothing on the. We're getting nothing on the uh, on the scanners. Uh, currently, we had an issue with our medical tricorder. Uh, it seems like there's always an issue of some sort with that one. Uh, <laughs> but we are working on a workaround now by using the station scanner, and we will get that data to you as soon as possible. Oh, very good. So anything that you need, we can. Uh, Maybe set um, some of Mr. Davok's uh, team to work uh, to work any details you get through in uh, one of our one of our uh, uh, multi-purpose labs. Understood. Uh, sidebar, not to roll. I was just curious. What else are we supposed to be doing on the station? We got the door. We get, like like we, we got, got the door open. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got the door open. We got the oxygen back. And um, we made it to the lab. We found the parasites. Is there anything else that we need to be doing on this station other than figuring out what the fuck happened? That's kind of... That's the bottom line big picture is, yeah. Uh, this was your only lead in what happened on the Alcubierre. Yeah, yeah but we've, the, we've got the, some uh, information on the... Was it a Tellarite freighter? Uh, yes, <laughs> you saw the... Um, the logs of the station, uh, yeah, that's right. Freighter that's been shuttling back between the um, uh, core. What's it? 
uh, between Cord here and the Cordolan system. Cordolan system, thank you. Um, yeah, and you saw a Romulan very briefly in one of the station log images. So would the next course of action conceivably to go to that system and look for... Try and find that freighter. freighter. Yeah. On the off chance that it doesn't actually... That, that it has more information on what happened here, possibly. Um, okay. Um, actually, Mr. Davok, could you um, see if you can remotely patch in um, uh, the, the, these medical sensors into uh, the Livingston or find some way of doing a direct upload from what, if we can use the, this facility's uh, scanning information or at least send, the, send whatever data they've got from this, this database back to the, uh, the Livingston. Yeah. Yes. Can I do that? <laughs> You're all going to hate me. Lovely, lovely threats that I've got to spend. Oh. Um, <laughs> the station scanners are old and knackered and do not work. That's not going to is, is everything Klingon just fucking fall apart? <laughs> like that ship and these Pretty scanners... Much. Watch this yourself. is a very heavily <laughs> neglected <laughs> station, um, and you. I mean, to be fair, you you kind of you were aware of that going in. It's it's been really neglected by the Klingon Empire. Um, right. Even well, in his logs, the the com station commander talked about you know this is just like this is outskirts and this is crap. <laughs> <laughs> um, on the off chance, and I'm thinking out loud here to everyone. If the station is, if the station scanners are down, let's be honest, we probably know that this is not the last parasite that we're going to come in, come into contact with. I would keep the, the knowledge that it was mutated in some way and what you saw, and, I'll, and you can write it in a report. If we see another parasite along the way, we'll be able to make a scanner, uh, a scan of that and see if this is an ongoing problem or if this was this specific one. Either way, I think... If unless anyone has any objections, I think we might be done here. Mm. Is there any um, is there any value in comparing the notes that Mr. Bosch got with uh, Major De Gaulle? I'll just clear my throat um, <laughs> and seeing if uh, seeing if that's what she was expecting to find. We can certainly compare notes. Am I allowed to do that? You're allowed yep. to do whatever you feel is appropriate. I, I I feel like now that we're in this together, I should mm. should be honest <laughs> about what I know. I revealed some of it last week, so mm -hmm. or last time. Um, Rule of acquisition two hundred and twelve. Oh, lie. shut up! A good lie is easier to believe than the truth. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah, that's true. Um. I can't remember exactly what I revealed last time. What did I tell? Did I tell you everything? What did I reveal you, to you? You were definitely. I not can tell you, you did not tell them everything. <laughs> Why don't you start from the top? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Didn't you say you were Klingon intelligence? Yes. And you knew about there being experimentation, but yes. any more than that, I don't know if we got anything okay. okay okay so i i found out that there were experiments going on here to uh use use the parasites in order to enhance klingon warriors so i made my way here to investigate and potentially put a stop to these experiments because i don't agree with them um which is why i wanted to destroy the evidence in case it was used ever again to um, to enhance warriors in a way that I don't, I don't feel is right. So I think it... proceeding forward should be very careful with anything to do with the parasites or the DNA that is found within them now. Is that the, is that a personal feeling or is that the feeling of Klingon intelligence? I choose not to answer. <laughs> um, because because somebody is paying for this. 
well, somebody is running this and setting it up. This wasn't like three guys in the back that were just like, yo, I got a parasite. Let's stick it in somebody's body. Like this was sanctioned by someone within. That's something within... I'm not, I'm not, I'm not certain of myself. Mm. Edging a little closer to his friend Bosch, uh, Chief Reggie has asked us straight up. So we've got rid of these bodies. Are there any more out there that have done a bit like this? How many more of these are you expecting to find, Major? She counting them? I think she's ignoring you. Hmm. Um, I mean, I wonder if there's any more on the freighter. We know that uh, they, I mean, they depressurized this station. Do we? Do we have any idea of how many people would would have been on this station? Is I'm sure uh, Davok would be able to have a look and access just what was going on, who this station was in contact to, this any kind of, fairly sort of communications standard, in and out. It's a sort of fairly standard Klingon build, so it'd have a fairly, you know, you'd be able to find out how much crew it had. Yeah, I think I think a crew list might be important considering. So pretty much the information you got last time was all the information you were able to get from the computers. Mm. Um, so my my again. internet's really bad. I keep like it keeps glitching out for me. Hmm. Ah, no. yeah. you weren't ignoring people then. <laughs> I can't and the sound isn't coming through properly. Sorry, oh. I wasn't trying to ignore anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Not to worry. How, how, Not many, to worry. how many? How many? How many more um, uh, modified Klingon warriors are you expecting to find, or do you think it's a small uh, amount that would have been experimented on? I don't have the answers to this. I wasn't sure what to expect in the first place. So, is this the only station that you know about? This is the only was... one I was told about. There, there could be more, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, I'm going to relay all that to Rawl. Just kind of our current situation um, that we aren't it. Oh, I think Osh is frozen. I think, yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's just me. frozen. We're getting some communications uh, oh, over here on the living stone. Oh, just yeah. let me oh, my back. Yeah. So I can just yeah. take it a bit more. Uh, no, I, I was just going to say that if um, I'll mention it to Rawl that we're having trouble having like a direct connection to the Livingston from any scans and basically what we just figured out uh, and ask his orders. Um, or her orders, excuse me, her orders for what we should be doing here. Um, if there's anything else on the station that we need. From our point of view, um, I would patch myself actually through to the Major and say, uh, Major, uh, if we've reached a dead end here, and uh, from the information we have, um, it would seem that uh, the Cordolan system and this Tellarite freighter might be our next link in the chain of clues. If you're convinced that there's no f other forms of this parasitic uh, or parasitically adapted Klingons on board that station, um, my suggestion would be that we continue our investigation there if you'd like to come with us. Otherwise, we can agree. leave you on the station. <laughs> I would agree, yes, I'll, I'll join you because that seems to be the only option. <laughs> uh, Defiant class is definitely an upgraded, uh, upgraded transport to what you came in on. <laughs> Thank you. Where, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that. Um, very good. In that case, uh, if there's uh, nothing, if there's nothing more you can gain from a, from uh, the station, Mr. Baron, uh, bring your team back to the Livingston, and uh, we'll prepare to set course for the Cadillan system. Um, before Bosch beams up, is there any way? of sort you can't of... break the station down for scrap and sell it no <laughs> <laughs> and we're not gonna pull out the tractor beam and tow it along with us well i was actually thinking of trying to detonate it just to kind of what you know wipe wipe the computer core completely so that there's no way anyone can bring it bring any information back and maybe uh add an extra crater to this little moon. Um, I would agree with that. 
this uh, this is of course the um, property of the Klingon Defence Force, not a Federation uh, starbase. So I have no authority to start blowing things up like this unless I received it from. Oh, Roll, you're you're off the call. Yeah, you're, you're yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing on Just, regional you, governor. But, but Bosch has Bosch has hung up on Raal already. Yeah, yeah. No, no. You're you're off the call. Get him back. Get him back. You're now the you're now the uh, the Andorian. Um, so, in which case, which button do you want me to press, Bosch? Which button? <laughs> I'm okay with that idea. Snip the red wire. Actually, uh, uh, Major, is there any way that we can? Um stop any information being leaked from this base if maybe this base wasn't uh, operational. It exist anymore? Yeah. Are you suggesting we destroy it? I, I mean, if that's what you're suggesting. I'm, I'm going, <laughs> going by your, your hints. Is there a self-destruct on this station? Can I do that? There are big red buttons somewhere. <laughs> There's, there isn't a big red button, unfortunately. Uh, you can... Ooh. You think it'd be quite tricky with the decrepit nature of the station, but possibly you can self-destruct it. However, a quantum torpedo to the reactor will just obliterate it. Well, uh, I, I vote we do that. And as spokesperson for Klingons and Bajorans everywhere, I, I give you give you permission to do that. <laughs> it's great. So um, we're going to beautify the universe one space station at a time. <laughs> Okay. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, uh, yeah. When when we've been back in, we're going to suggest to Raal to. Uh, uh, there seemed like there was some anomalies in the reactor room. We should probably uh, level it just in case. I won't tell him if you won't, boss. <laughs> <laughs> Sir. <laughs> Uh, yes, I, I, I say be uh, well, back. I take advice from um, from our Klingon Defence Force um, colleague. Um, if she thinks that the station poses a um, biological hazard to passing shipping, we could probably have more than enough reason to burn a quantum torpedo into it just to um, tidy things up. Yeah, I think that's a good course of action. Because I'm the one who's got to explain to Admiral Janeway why I blew up a Klingon station. Just, just remember, I've uh, already been to her office once this <laughs> this season. It was it was terrifying. Uh, tell, tell her it with me is fine. I'll, I'll take the. Uh, I'll take excellent, this. sir. I, I think uh, I think you can definitely say that it's um, it, it would pose a significant risk to all uh, Federation and. Playing on uh, traffic in the area, and um, just sort of remember that uh, rule of acquisition number five is. Oh my uh, God! Always exaggerate your estimates. Of course, of course. Very well, Mr. Baron. Uh, bring your team back and uh, bring any uh, any broken tricorders as well. Um, they all have to be signed. They're all signed out. I want them all signed back in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do that. So we'll go ahead and get okay. out of here. Okay. Uh, the, trans board. the transporter engages and you all being back. Quick question. Uh, the remains of the doctor, the Klingon doctor, are you taking him back with you? No. Ooh. I would like Ooh. to, but I get a feeling that the Major might uh, kibosh that. As per her request, we were going to destroy him after <laughs> we, uh, after we uh, studied him. So, to not piss off our newfound uh, friend and ally in this, uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna kill it or or obliterate it. Kill it, kill it again. Surprise the body. Good choice. <laughs> no problem. And, uh, yeah. Yes, not not wanting to piss off the person you've just called Major D Bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that was that was kind of out of character, but you know. <laughs> okay, so it. no. I can't pronounce her name. I can't De pronounce. Gaulle. What was that? The Gaulle. Bless you. Yeah, I like be back. Okay. Does um, it? Anyways, Does it? no, it's uh, yeah, yeah. So we'll just. It's like she's Klingon intelligence, right? And you're the only, like, current... Yeah. 
I'm Klingon Defense Force, but you, I'm intelligent too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Klingons and poets and authors and everything. They're not all thirsty warriors. <laughs> yeah. All right. It just yeah, so we'll happens be back. that the major is. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and you return to the Livingston. Yeah. And then Which is parked suggest- not far away from the station. That's the only hint you're getting. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably move it if we're going to hit it with a quantum torpedo. I'm yeah, assuming. We- yeah, Before I'll, we do I'll, anything, we should decontaminate and make sure none of this parasite is on us. Just saying. <laughs> Uh, would that be part of the beaming process would decontaminate anyway? Oh, does it? Yeah. Okay, cool. 2150s. You've got to sit in the shower with the to pole for half an hour. Um, Don't make me that. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, and you're yeah, all, no you're, really you're, awkward scenes. But if the, if the major does over. wish to uh, to rub uh, gel into... Now anyway, moving on! <laughs> <laughs> Get the Ferengi out of the shower room again. Can I take a shuttle and go now? (laughs) I've only, I've I've got, I've got six on board. I I think I can, just to keep you away from the Ferengi, you can borrow one. (laughs) Drop it in at the nearest Federation Starbase with as little scratches as possible. (laughs) Why are you guys? It's not like Enterprise Rent a Car. Yeah, if Why you, you guys? Part, if, you, if you hire a shuttle pod and I haven't got one, I have to give you a Type Seven as an upgrade. <laughs> <laughs> Why you guys take care of that? I actually need to uh, mess with my internet, so I will be right back. I apologize. Okay, no worries. We well, will, uh... In that case, if I if I uh, if we just send Reggie back down to um, back down to the brig wherever he's um, tinkering with his <laughs> firearms. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Or he's, I bet he's probably got an office somewhere just near Bosch's sick bay, actually, and they just keep an eye on him and make sure he's all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> security post just around, just a corridor away. Um, in the meantime, uh, Raoul will uh, instruct the helm officer, uh, who is uh, standing in. Uh, Grace, back us off from the space station, please. Uh, minimum safe distance for quantum torpedo detonation. Uh, minimum safe distance would be out of range of the quantum torpedoes uh, unless you raise shields. Oh, okay. Well, if we're going to be blowing stuff up, raise shields and arm weapons. (laughs) Uh, In which case, getting a safe distance is really easy. So I wasn't going to... I wasn't going to give that to you on a plate. I was going to let you blow yourselves up. (laughs) Fair. Okay. Um... And uh, yes, we're not under the right names, all of us, but that's fine. Until Usher gets back, we will live with that. Uh, so, I am going to need from someone from the tactical officer. Uh, unless you, of course, would like the Major to do the honours, acting Captain Roll. Uh, that's fine. Yes, Major, if you'd like to um, take the weapons uh, uh, weapon station for me, please. A lot of trust for someone you just met. I'll do yes. it, though. Definitely uh, going to raise indeed... an eyebrow at that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the weapon system of one of the most powerful Federation vessels there is is unlocked to you, Major. Uh, and you are okay. being invited to fire a quantum torpedo at the station. The shields are up. No. On the ship. Anyone not the ever asks? It wasn't. It wasn't a Federation officer that did it. Perfect. Perfect yeah. cover for you. Uh, yeah, I fire. I fire. Can I fire the quantum torpedo, you please? Can fire the quantum torpedo. Uh, give me a. Uh, you need to roll two d twenty. This is a weapons and security roll. Uh, so, for the ship. That is 17. Uh, how many, how many am I rolling? Sorry, two. Oh, you're rolling two. It's a difficulty one. So okay. You need to get one under 17. I got a 14 and a two. Yeah. Ooh. Two successes. You can't get any more momentum because mm. you're at your limit. Uh, and yes, a quantum torpedo. Uh, for for do you know what for a Federation ship, 
Uh, Major, you're quite impressed with the firepower on this little thing. Um, it's got I've teeth. Some respect. Ship. <laughs> yeah, um, it wouldn't be out of place in the KDF. Pardon? And uh, it wouldn't be out of place with the KDF. Oh, okay, cool. I'll uh, I'll make a mental note of that, but I won't say it out loud. No, okay. Um, <laughs> and uh, yes, the station is obliterated as you land a hit directly uh, on the reactor. Admiral, <clears throat> um, uh, we seem to have someone trying to beam in, if you would uh, uh, oh. lower shields. <laughs> yes, yes. So I'm thinking, what is he talking about? <laughs> I was just expecting him to be on the phone to Janeway then, to snitch on me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's just built up a space uh, station. That's, uh, <laughs> Lovely. Yeah. Let's move people about. Sorry about that, guys. That's no yeah. problem. Okay. I'm Gosh, this well. is. Uh... Hey, there we go. Right, everybody's in the right places. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So the station's been blown up, Usher. Um, the major went into your uh, into your tactical console and uh, took control of the weapons. On this very heavily armed Federation ship. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Sam. Mm, right. As long, okay. as long as it wasn't Bosch. I like it's like when you leave the room, <laughs> we just hand over the ship to some random Klingon. Like. <laughs> the last time Bosch used that station, you just, there were like Cheetos, like dust and shit like that. Just... I think you'll find it was Beetle Snuff. <laughs> Beetle Snuff. <laughs> and, like, and like all of the like copper wire and that are missing for whatever reason <laughs> it's just like wait a second <laughs> i think the correct phrase is i think you'll find that's beetle snuff officer um <laughs> uh we're the same rank <laughs> yeah no i mean yeah anyway <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's what you tell the police anyway uh <laughs> oh. moving swiftly on from that uh yeah so what's the plan now you you you've got a lot of Neither. I would like wreckage. to use a momentum to Ooh. make sure that the slightly on the Fritz medical tricorder can upload all of its data safely without losing anything. Oh, interesting use of momentum. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. uh can I assist with this with my skill in computers? Uh, so, before I use any of your momentum, uh, I am going to say to access basically the hard drive of the, the tricorder is going to be an engineering task difficulty three. Okay. So you can spend momentum to make that easier, obviously. Mm -hmm. Buy extra dice. Yeah. Some threat to get some extra dice, pile the dice ball up. Or we could even ask as our chief engineer to help with that if it's an engineer. I thing. think that would be... I think the chief engineer doing it rather than myself would be uh, definitely a, a, a benefit. Mm -hmm. So we get, yeah. um, we get uh, Commander Gomez to sort that to, uh, to, deal, to make the main roles for it. And um, maybe uh, Davok could assist. That will throw in an extra dice, and then use some momentum to add an extra one. Yeah, like a four dice roll. Yep, I can certainly assist. I have some engineering skill. Okay, uh, so Davok, if you can give me a control and engineering roll, then please. Oh, I've got three. My engineering's four. Got a three. Oh. Do you have any focuses? No. Uh, other than computers. Uh, computers or negotiations. Would apply. Yeah, computers will apply. So that mm -hmm. counts as two successes. Two. Um fantastic. Uh who's going to roll first, Sonia Gomez? Here, if you wish to roll, you're more than welcome. Um, I can roll. How many do I need to roll? Uh well, uh, depends. Are you spending momentum to buy another point? Because you only need one more success. Yes. Yeah, spend momentum because we can gain momentum. Yeah. Okay, okay. Let's do that 
So roll 3d20 then, and uh, you are looking to get under uh, da, 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 15. Oh, I got two 13s and a 10. Nice. Okay, <laughs> you get your momentum back and you get your success, and yes, you are able to download the hard drive from the tricorder into the main computer. Fantastic. And then we'll have all of Davik's lackeys just go figure out what the hell is going on with that data. Yeah, I'm going to task Grace to get on that straight away. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I'm going to. I'm. I'm going to. Uh, yeah, my whatever whatever staff I have available, we're just going to be go, going through that data now. So, what, whatever's happening with the ship going forward, um, yeah, Bo- Boshan, we're pretty much going into sort of medical lockdown. So, like key staff in the uh, the infirmary, nobody else coming in, and we're just going through that data. Okay. You're so much more professional about this than we, than we had Klingons come to the ship. Okay, yeah. someone with uh, knowledge of Klingons and exobiology would be very useful to you. Yep. Yes. Um... Just saying. <laughs> The the offer the offer is there if the major wishes to join my uh, my staff for um, going through all this information. Yeah, I'd like to join your staff. I, I think I could help, and I'd be interested to see if they can find any other different things that I missed. Yeah, major, so... our uh, scientific suite is at your disposal. Thank you. Give me my guns back. <laughs> <laughs> Not <the> weapon system. <laughs> I will relinquish control of the weapons. I will go sit at my console then. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I like like the fact that Varen like went to go take a whiz, and like a station blew up in the background. He comes back (laughs) and he's just like, "Wait, the fuck did I miss?" (laughs) (laughs) Um, We'll we'll set the major up in in like one of the additional bays that we've got. For uh, for research and I think there was like a ninety percent chance it would be like in my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> if if she if she uh, requires quarters, there is a spare bunk. Just um, his medical bay. <laughs> um, but no, like and this the um, it it will be uh, sort of a, a slightly offline system. So she's got access to everything, but she can't access any other systems. Will will it? It's one of the research sections rather than a access to a full uh, Livingston um, database. But you just let me control your weapons. Yes, but okay. no. But... That, was an, that was an honorific. That was, diploma- that was diplomacy. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. I'll, also... I'll, accept, I'll accept my child lock computer. It's just like, yes. she's an ally. <laughs> like, we're doing you get, this for the clip. You get the, my first computer terminal. <laughs> <laughs> Just, now you, the Fisher Price Federation. Just, it's just made out of wood, and it's not even a real computer. <laughs> it's an, it's an abacus. Yeah, it's, just, yeah. Um, it's, it's one of those no. sort of uh, you, you. You're in a really swish office, and the computer looks amazing. But it's like, why are there no USB ports, and why isn't this connected to anything? No, it's a it's a really powerful computer. It just doesn't have access to anything else. <laughs> Um, yeah, that is no problem at all. By the way, Sonia has given you a replacement medical tricorder. Fantastic. Um, as she gave it you, she did that snatching it away thing. And look after this one. <laughs> Be careful, 007. It's just had a new coat of paint. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> That's about it. Um, okay. Are you getting uh, Lieutenant Davok to assist as well? in this research um that that's a, a question for uh our commanding officer how many people he wants to throw at this or whether he requires uh mr davok's uh, assistance in uh going after this shuttle uh, well i would say that the, our our big problem is that there's some there's the potential for some heavily armed genetically enhanced klingons rampaging around the galaxy so let's deal with that problem, and um, in the meantime, whilst you're doing that, we'll be setting course for the system where we're going to be following the trail. But do you, do you, would, do you want Mr. Davok's assistance with you or with us? 
Uh, Mr. Darrock, give the Major and Dr. Bosch all assistance that you can, please. Absolutely. Especially with computers, because he's just <laughs> put Beatles snuff down his computer again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to get you all to do on this <laughs> exactly. is just to... Like it's all up. Um, is to one of you, whoever is leading this research, to roll 2d20 against control and either science or medicine, um, and the other two to roll 1d20 against the same. So tell me, first of all, who is leading this research? I'll, uh, I think I'll helm it because it's my sick bay. Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, Obviously, so, it's going to be a, on a medicine rather than a, a science. Uh, Davok, please give me a control, and I'm guessing your science beats your medicine. Yeah. I got a 14, and a I need 14. to get 14. And you need to get a 14, so you get mm. one success. That's good. Uh, major. Uh, your science beat your medicine, so give me a single d20 and uh, get a 15 or below. I'm so sorry, I got a 16. Okay. Uh, interesting. Off the team! Jesus <laughs> Christ! Take some momentum. Can I do interesting. that? Interesting. Oh, um, uh, but. I'm going to say, actually, that would be the team leader's call um, to spend. Uh, well, well, we'll see how the team leader does first. Uh, so roll your 2d20 against your control and presumably medicine. And it's control rather than reason? It is control, yes. Okay. Uh, okay, so the first one is a 7. Uh, and the second is... A Star Trek symbol. Ooh. Oh, yes. nice. <laughs> so you get uh, three successes. Do you have any focuses that might apply? Uh, probably not. I've, so I've got medicine and chemicals, but that's really focused on hmm. uh, types of chemical usage. I've got emergency medicine, trauma surgery, triage, infectious diseases, and Andorians. So... I, I don't really think I've got too much sway with particular Klingons and uh, xenobiology mm. of uh, things like that. Only your none, previous none studies. None of those yeah. are going to apply. Now, I'm going to invite you to spend momentum if you wish. Basically, the more points you've got, and you've got three at the moment, the more information I'm going to give you, right. the more detailed information I'm going to give you. Okay, then, yeah, definitely we'll spend some momentum. And, yeah, in which case, I would say Next. use all of the dice you possibly can. Yeah. Uh, you which... have six momentum. Yeah, which is why I'm saying that. I'm going to make the executive uh, decision and say we'll use four momentum. Mm -hmm. Four momentum which increases your successes to seven. So I'm going to assume that this is this is en route to the Cordelan system. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. So over over a period of time of studying the genetics, uh, the genetic strand, you 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 extrapolate the DNA and basically take it to pieces and 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 study it in great depth uh, with with a lot of help from Lieutenant Davok and the Majors present um, you, uh, you you managed to ascertain that it seems that the, the Klingon's DNA was kind of it, it, it's had the Parasite's DNA integrated into it and the Klingon DNA effectively rejected it which caused it to de-evolve. The parasitic DNA had Klingon DNA incorporated into it 
Uh, and it was that that's why it was bulking up and becoming effectively more Klingon, like a Klingon version. It hit the uh, gym. Of the Parasite. It definitely been juicing up. Um But the other aspect, it was bringing the two different DNA strands closer to each other. They were, rather than each becoming a new individual thing, it's almost like they were being brought closer together on a genetic level. And this was, they were experimented separately, or this was when the parasites went into the Klingons, that's what started happening. It's very hard to tell. It's very hard to tell because um, it, it's hard to age genetic manipulation mm. in this manner. Okay. Is there anything I can do with this information? Uh, what would you like to do with the information? I don't know. Is there anything that my character would be able to sort of discern from this information because she's a xenobiologist? Uh, the major would be surprised to hear of the genetic changes to the parasites. Right, okay. That is unexpected. Would it be fair to say that what this research is indicating is that in mixing Klingon and um, parasitic DNA, what happens to the... Well, essentially what you're saying is that if you were to speed up evolution, the Klingons and the parasites would evolve towards basically the same creature. That could be an assumption that could be made, if one was so inclined. I'm just a pilot, really, but that, that sounds a bit like... <laughs> Science is not my thing. The but... acting captain, <clears throat> never mind the pilot. Uh, yeah, there's I mean, a... I, I, I think it's him as just the pilot. A, um, the, there's a, a query from the database asking whether or not this makes them new creatures and does this count as first contact? The database being Twitch? It may well be Twitch chat, yes. I do not have to deal with first contact situations as an acting <laughs> captain. Thank you very much. We're much more um, of a second contact kind of yeah, There is definitely, yeah, we're definitely second contact. <laughs> it's not that it, it's actually not first contact in the same way that um, genetically modified Suliban or genetically modified Klingons or genetically modified humans would still be part of the humans or the Klingons or the hmm. Superman. So, Major, the uh, what was happening there, the experiments, were they just on the Klingons or were they on the parasite? Well, that the information that I was given was that they were attempting to use the parasites to enhance Klingon warriors, which obviously mm. happened because their, their exoskeletons were, were different to what a normal Klingon would look like. But I wasn't aware that this this process was also affecting the parasite. So I'm not sure whether that was intentional or whether that happened by accident. Mm. Like, could it reverse? Uh, that doesn't make sense. Mm. I think I think the Romulan connection is interesting here. <clears throat> the parasites got on the station. That much is clear. Did the Klingons bring them in to perform experiments, or did the experiment on them? just because they happened to be there. Which then leads you to the question, did the Romulans know they had them there, or is this part of a plot to get this parasite into the Klingons? Or do any Romulans who've been affected by the parasite know what happens when you give it to Klingons? Well, there's also another question, which is, if the, parasit if the parasite's DNA was changed, or had that of Klingon DNA in it? What happens when that parasite goes to another host after it's been changed? Mm. Like, does the change change the parasite much? Like, is it a beneficial change to the parasite, or is it like a detrimental change? Well, my my point being more, if 
the parasite is gathering DNA from one specific species and then it goes to another species, what happens to that species mm -hmm. other than the parasite? Does it add the DNA of the Klingon? Does it also add like what? I, do the parasites just go around collecting mm -hmm. genomes? Like, uh, does it become a little bit trill? Yeah. yeah, but it seems exactly. to be a result of the uh, what the Klingons were doing to enhance themselves like maybe it's backfired well, to be and... fair we don't actually know no we don't what the I, I mean that's that's making an assumption mm -hmm. because we know that they were doing experiments but we have no idea which one came first we don't know if they did an experiment to that parasite or that parasite was in a klingon at one point mm. so like um from the data we've got would we be able to work out whether the changes to the parasite made it better or whether it made it like less capable for living uh it made it physically stronger mm. um bulkier certainly um it didn't reduce its lifespan you don't believe no okay so it only makes things worse for us oh. <laughs> mm. Certainly doesn't improve the situation, but do you know what? That's probably a really good place for us to take a break. Mm. Time did mull it all over. Mm. So much to mm. think about. Yeah, so right, we will see up. everyone in six minutes. Bye. There we are, and we are back. Well, most of us are back. Um, poor Kira, <laughs> not feeling very well from her. She had her second uh, vaccination today, so she did very, very well to stick with us as long as she did. So uh, the major is going to be meditating on the results of... And Matt, we just the... really don't care about, which is why he's gone. He's busy yeah. researching or something. Yeah. Oh, damn. Um, so oh, Matt's here. Quiet. Matt's here. Not to oh, worry. There he is. I've been here the whole time. What are you talking it's about? Fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's uh, fine. Yeah, so uh, so um, the major is is going to be meditating on the results of the uh, the investigation with Bosch and Davok. Um, but while all that's going on, uh, let's we bring ourselves simultaneously to acting Captain Raal and his exo Lee Varon. Uh, what would you like to do on route, on route to the Cordelin system? Mm, well, uh, first of all, I'm absolutely going to be getting on the subspace network and communicating to uh, Admiral Janeway exactly why we've just blown up Cortar Station. And uh, <laughs> definitely pointing out that it was not the Federation that did it, but a Klingon finger that pushed the button. You you need to make sure that the uh, the auto noise cancellation is on on that call, so that you won't hear like the champagne that's going on in the background and everyone cheering about how we just blew up a station. How much fun that was! Yeah. I'll, so I'll, I'll... I'm I'm going to ask a, a a question of Ron now. Uh, are you doing this over a secure channel or a general? Oh. Comms this is absolutely. I'm I'm written, writing it in code in invisible ink. I'm doing every possible thing to make sure this is extreme. Just goes between me and Admiral Janeway. <laughs> right, you are using your full on every possible. Uh, are you doing this from the bridge, from your ready room? I shall go to my ready room to uh, to pass on an update on the mission uh, using um, secure channel uh, RAL Alpha Alpha Gamma Nine. That's <laughs> okay. One. <laughs> Does the Defiant have a ready? Uh, that one. Yeah, it either does or it's it's Doesn't. Raul's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm unsure. <laughs> this is slightly larger than a normal Defiant class ship. Okay. About ten percent. So you do get some things that you don't normally. Do you have a fish tank? Like 
I like to think that you've just gone into the corner and you're just like facing <laughs> yeah. the wall and just being like, got... <laughs> pulls a blanket over his head. It's literally just on... like a broom closet and it's got like a mop in there and all this other stuff. And <laughs> it's just outside, it has a piece of tape with ready room written on it. <laughs> Just before, just before I make the call, I put on a different pair of glasses with a large false nose and a moustache. <laughs> <laughs> and a newspaper with some holes in it. Um, from, from, from memory, Defiant Class does have a ready room. Um, and w without going too geeky, there was that word, um, where there was the uh, cadets that had control of the, not the Defiant. Valiant. The Valiant. Yes, and the Valiant. There, was a, there was a meeting between Nog and the Captain... I'm assuming this is DS9. Yes. I still yeah. haven't seen any yeah. of it, so... It wasn't Walters, was it? Yes. He was the original captain who got killed. No, uh, the, the first officer was a proto-Karen, I remember that. Yeah. Because she was a This Karen will be the next Star Trek Sunday topic. <laughs> How many classes have ready rooms? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I can't remember his name either. But yes, you're absolutely right. He did have a ready room, so yes. Uh, so Raal has a ready room as well. Uh, so yes, you go in there. It is absolutely secure channel. So excited uh, about at both it. ends. Is there anything? So just to kind of um, shortcut it a little bit, is there anything you are not telling Admiral Janeway? Wow, well, that's that's a question. Is it? I always get the impression that Admiral Janeway, when she talks to you, can see what colour your soul is just by <laughs> glancing at you. Um, <laughs> I have this horrible feeling that if I even if I if I omitted anything, she would just look straight back through the through the screen and say, "What are you not telling me, Raoul?" And I'd just crumble anyway. So um, no, I think in the in, in the interest of full disclosure, I'm going to be telling her everything. I'm only acting captain, so I've not even got the keys permanently. I don't <laughs> want it taken off me this quickly. Okay, uh, as you are telling her the full events. When you mention about the Major and the Major coming on board, the the Admiral looks away for a moment, just off, seemingly off behind the view screen, off to the right. Um, there's an almost imperceptible nod. And she turns her attention back to you and says Commander Raal tread with care the Klingon Defence Force have no record of anyone being dispatched to Kortar um, I will make investigations this side uh, with regards to the other matters, um, the destruction of Kortar, totally understood, good call. Uh, and yes, please head to the Cordelan system post haste. Uh, you have authority to exceed warp 5. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Admiral. And um, we will continue our cautious investigation of both the parasitic problem and our guest. There you go. <laughs> right. Yeah, I was gonna say he hits that. He hits that button. And goes. Oh, oh. It's alright for you lot. You don't have. You don't have to keep getting on the phone to Admiral Janeway. You, you're in the background there. Like, oh, go push Ral forward. Go on. Go on. You talk to her. You get into That's trouble. Well above my pay grade. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Anything I do, I cop the fight. You know, it's, it's, it's a decision. We support it. We're right all behind I'm, you. All, all I'm imagining is, uh, yeah. is uh, thank you, thank you for your time, uh, Admiral Janeway. Uh, button. <laughs> do you? Uh, oh, is it? Where's this thing? What do I, which? What, what do I press? Uh... <laughs> God. Do you share this information with your XO or your chief of security? Um, it is vitally important, as I understand it, for a crew and ship to function properly. If the captain and the XO 
are in lockstep. So yeah, I will absolutely be sharing all this information. Mr. Varon, can you report to my radio room, please? <laughs> just, <laughs> just he tries to stuff himself in that broom closet as well. It's just like, <laughs> what do you want? And, after, and, after, and it takes me like 20 minutes to undo all the locks of it because I, I didn't <laughs> yeah. want anyone coming in. <laughs> Oh, oh, left the chain, no. the <laughs> yeah, there's a small, there's, there's like a small cat flap. They just put, uh, <laughs> put his head through. Oh, the ship's cat. There must be a ship's cat. We'll figure that one out later. It should, it should be some like absurd animal. It shouldn't be a cat. It'd be like we just have a random llama. It'd be, it'd be the ship's tribble. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> I've got Bosch to spay it though. I don't want the ship full of them. Thank you. <laughs> be a responsible tribble owner, people. There Get your tribble spayed. That's just that is just creepy. <laughs> it's like the Doctor Evil look. It's just... it's, uh... <laughs> oh dear! Um... So next right. time we're back, there'll be far more of them. Yeah. <laughs> official triple. Official triple. Fantastic. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, as as uh, Mr. Rao reports, to, <laughs> reports to my ready room, and I will basically in, impart all the information. That I've got, that I've got, especially our uh, the um, the warning. No way. Interesting. Okay. Uh, do we need to do anything about that currently, or should we just keep an eye on it? I think just keep an eye. Remember, um, the Klingons by nature are going to find this incredibly embarrassing. Um, are they going to admit that they've sent someone to investigate this? Maybe. Maybe not. Um, to be well, fair, anything... at that higher level, I would tend to suspect that if someone like Admiral Janeway asks a Klingon, a senior Klingon officer directly, who have you sent? And they say, we haven't. I tend to suspect that that was truthful. Yeah, that was my concern as well. She, or he, it's a he, right? Kira's, uh, is it she? Uh, she. Okay. I tend to think that she seemed a little unsure of herself and that ship was certainly a non-standard uh klingon vessel but ship was over 300 years old was it not i believe 200 but yeah well 200 out years old yeah well out um so anyways uh moving on to the other problem at hand we should what do we know about the freighter is there any way to track the freighter? And I'm asking Stu this, uh, just because Varen would hopefully know. I, I imagine if we're heading towards the system as well, is there anything we can do to set some sort of sensor, uh, some sort of sensors and scanning to pick up maybe any sort of sign signature trace of that freighter? Uh, you can you can make a general scan, but you certainly don't have any warp signatures or um, okay. anything of that nature. So you. You don't really know what you'd be looking for. It'd be like um, like looking on the road for tire tracks when you don't know even if the vehicle you're following has tires. Well, then would it be would it be beneficial to monitor civilian traffic in the area or civilian or commercial traffic in the area when, once we get into the, sim the system? That would be a fairly standard thing to do anyway, okay. is to kind of okay. be aware of other vessels within your general area, just so you don't crash into each other. Yeah. I mean, um, I mean that that's fair. Yes. I'm going to let you in a little secret. This yeah. is my first time in a ship. Oh, <laughs> totally, totally. Uh, no worries. Uh, I mean, that said, space is big, like yeah. really big. Thank I mean, you me. might think it's a long way down the shops for a packet of crisp, <laughs> but, you know, anyway. Been a hitchhiker's there. Um, <laughs> okay. All right. Well, towel day's coming. I hope we've all got a towel. Yep. Towel day next Tuesday. <laughs> Just so you all know. Uh, is it really? It is. Well, wonderful. There you go. Uh, so, anything else you'd like to do? I mean, you do have a bit of time. In which case, I'd like to review the footage. Did we? Did we? Just... Or if not footage, we we didn't take the footage um, from the, did we? From the court art? No, you didn't. No. All right. Just trying to go back and remember, we saw the Tellarite ship 
uh, that was making regular stops uh, from that station and this system, correct? Mm -hmm. And at one point, we saw a Romulan on said ship. Very briefly... They seem to be hiding around a corner. They like duck their head out and then back again. Okay, so it did look suspicious. It was suspicious. a bit blink and you'll miss it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if that's the case, I might mention to to the captain, the acting captain, Brawl, um, it might be worth it to monitor for Romulan ships as well in the area. Okay. Yeah, I think but, we can... There is some sort of... Uh... Well, we'd need some sort of... If they were cloaked, we'd need some sort of tachyon detection grid to be able to pick up uh, cloaked Romulan ships. No, no, mind. I'm not sure how advanced we are that we can get any sort of net like, like that uh, going up in ship. You do not believe you have the capability to scan for cloaked Romulan ships. In which case, we'll just put around just obviously no Romulans there at all times because otherwise you would just have a nervous breakdown at all times like they're watching <laughs> me I know it I know it I know it I know it uh, along over the top of us the whole the whole time oh my god invisibility has so many problems with it <laughs> with that. like, like the, the idea of that coming a thing. um Fantastic plot device. I know they were having a great day when they came up with that in the original series. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's a good job that humans aren't paranoid. That's all I'll say. <laughs> not at all. Let me just quick look, look under my desk. We're not going to develop it ourselves. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Well, in which case, I I just say we go to the system and see. What, I mean, we don't really know any. What do we know about this system? Is there? That's something that we should do. Is there a star? chart room or something like there is on the Enterprise? What is it? Stellar cartography or something? Uh, you you, don't, you don't have before. anything quite that fancy, but you do have a database. Okay. Mm. Uh, and I can give you some information if you're choosing to look up the Cordelan system yeah. on the database. Let's, yeah. Yeah. Computer lens love to. stuff. How about the Cordelan system? Okay. So, the Cordelan system... Uh, I can tell you uh, is oh gosh I can't even see how many um, uh, can't see how many planets there are however uh, ships records show that the Cordelan 4 uh, which is a gas giant has 24 moons. There is a Klingon outpost on the sixth moon, which the Klingons used to mine for diamagnetic ore until abandoning the operation during the economic disarray that followed the destruction of Praxis. That's got to be, what, 100 years ago? Yeah, 2280, 2290. Yep, so definitely a long, long time ago. Um, Diamagnetic ore, a bit more digging into the database, uh, you discover produces a disruptive field akin to atmospheric electrical storms. It scrambles sensor readings and communications. As Mm. such, it makes this a very forgotten and out-of-the-way location Possibly a suitable place for anyone who wished to operate in secret. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, you said that, like, an abandoned station from a hundred years ago sounds like a wonderful place to experiment on <laughs> some Klingons with some parasites. The Especially communication the thing blows because if that's like the goddamn Oberth class, <laughs> it's screwed again. <laughs> It's a mining colony. It's totally different. Oh, I get it. I get it. Mining colony. God, that sounds even scarier. This is becoming like a dead space playthrough, and not not Star Trek. <laughs> All right. Any other notable planets or anything in that system other than where we obviously know the plot is? I'm just curious. Nothing of any note. There are no M-class planets. Uh, there is a Y-class planet. Uh, Cordelan uh, 6 
uh, M class being habitable for yeah for, uh, yes, certain races. Minshar like, okay. class is what it stands for. Interesting. Uh, okay. Which is a Vulcan word. Yeah, it's a Vulcan designation. Mm. Interesting. Uh, okay. Well, that's pretty much exactly what I want to know. I'm happy we looked at that. Okay. Do we have cetacean ops on this ship? <laughs> do we not? Have, do we have dolphins? <laughs> you do <laughs> not have dolphins. I'm afraid it's far too oh. small a vessel for this. I mean, you can just shame. have a pet dolphin that doesn't need water and just kind of flops around the bridge at random times. But Bosch has got a tank for his <laughs> dribble, which he can put water in. <laughs> you can have a very Genetically small dolphin. Genetically modified dolphin. But have you ever smelt wet dribble? <laughs> no. Oh, God. That's why, I don't let him, that's why I don't let him fill the ship, fill it on the ship. It's like people bringing in you know, fish sandwiches and putting them in the microwave. It's just not permitted on the bridge. No, no, it's, it's yeah. just, it just smells vaguely of, like, shrimp or something. <laughs> shrimp and disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Let's, uh, well, I don't know. You're a captain. Well, in that case, yes, we will, uh, as, we, as we approach the system, we will have to, I suspect we'll have to be setting course for the um, Cordelan 4 Decimal uh, 6. Mm. Uh, the designation is, you know, it has a name, does it have a name? Did the Klingons name it, or was it just so out of the way that it didn't get a name? No. It's, it's called name. Klingon Shithole 1. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, it's not been given a name. Um, this is just the mining outpost on in the Cordelin system. Yeah, actually, I think it might be to be really weird, weirdly sort of elite dangerous. It should be like Cordolan Four F probably if you're going fourth planet out and then Moon F. What a fucking if nerd! That's how you want to do it. <laughs> I'm just going to type that because now we've named it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, we'll see. Um, I, I can see. I can see Captain Rawl just editing the uh, the star map that we have, like right clicking it and adding rename. The, fe the I'm just. I'm just I'm editing the Federation wiki now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just it's, it's immediately as soon as you do that, it gets like changed back with a note from Janeway that it's like get back to work. Yeah, Rawl, stop fiddling <laughs> around with my designation. <laughs> Uh, could you make Pluto a planet again while you're uh, Yes, I've already done that. <laughs> yeah. I've already done that. Good. <clears throat> yeah, but now it's got citation needed next to it. <laughs> it's, it's like... Just point to the stream, so it's... <laughs> yeah. Jesus. Uh, okay. Is that, is, what, is, is that what's written like, underneath the hull on the Livingston now? Pluto is a planet. Is that what <laughs> in, in, in plates. You, can't, you, you can only see it in a certain light. And the, the reflection will show that it says that. Um, <laughs> Pluto is a planet. We'll have to start calling you Captain Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Uh, so it, the entire journey at Warp 8 takes about a week. So um, uh, I it's think it's fair to say far. that Bosch and Davok and, and the Major spent most of that time doing their research. Um, obviously, you've had your... Your conversation with Janeway I'm and I'm uh, getting back out of my ready room, having locked myself in. <laughs> dug, dug into the records. Is there anything else you would like to spend time doing before you arrive? I can't think of anything. Uh, I was going to say, is there anything we can do to the ship which might uh, help us out if there's any sort of um, sensor or scanning anomalies from that gas giant, which is going to be making our life problematic or can we calculate an area where we can do our prelim preliminary scans on approach to give us more information without getting caught in a great big dead zone next to it of not being able to find anything out or or not being able to communicate with anyone is there any way to counteract that or make something probably not uh from what you understand about the dia diamagnetic ore and the uh the effect it About has, it doesn't prevent sensors from working or communications. It just, it scrambles them a little bit, so it makes them more difficult. 
rather than stops them from being used. In terms of what you can do to the sensor, there's no known way to counteract the effects uh, of diamagnetic interference at this time. Okay. I'm just going to mention to Captain Raw, just we off chance. I mean, we're already going to roll here. We could just fly by it and blow it up and then move on with our day. And we don't even have to worry about it. I'm just saying. Now, I, I realize that uh, the one time this week we've managed to get the guns out on the ship, you didn't get to have a go on them. And I do apologize for that. But <laughs> diplomacy, I'm afraid, had to, Damn it. Come, had to come above um, you know, <laughs> Mr. Varon's space shooting gallery. Um, uh, no, we're not going to be blowing it up straight away. <laughs> not straight. Um, <laughs> Bosh, if, there's, if there is some downtime, wants to do a little bit of... Um, uh, like a refresher course on uh, Tellarite uh, physiology and other bits and pieces, just because we don't know what's being experimented on. We know the Tellarites are, have had some involvement, um, but it would be, yeah, just, just a good, from, a, from, from Bosch's point of view, he just wants to kind of see if, uh, mm. yeah, a bit of a, a bit of a refresher on, on Tellarites in general. Okay. Um... Can tell yeah, actually can you... Tellarites be infected with these parasites? Is if there was a ship with the bombers on it, have, did it transfer to the Tellarites? I'm Just definitely to... not googling Tellarite right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, searching the big faces, um, searching through the database, there are no known examples of Tellarites being infected by the parasites. Mm -hmm. Um, but then there's no examples of them coming into contact with the parasites. So, yeah, I'd, I'd like to just to general remind me of it's 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 been a while since I've I've studied Tellarites. Probably not since I've been back at the academy. So just a, a kind of do they have one heart, three hearts, that that kind of stuff. Gotcha. The the basic anatomy. Um, and absolutely, you can do that. Uh, interesting thing of note. Tellarites, in in terms of sort of, sort of human physiology and and what have you, they actually have more in common with um, seafaring creatures hmm. uh, called anemones, genetically hmm. speaking. Uh, their blood anemone. is a sort of rich leukocyte, viscous fluid. Um, Lovely, uh, rather than it being sort of iron uh, based. Um, I mean, other than that, they're, you know, quite often one humanoid is pretty much like another. Uh, they have transverse ribs like Ferengis do. Um, uh, and certainly you can make a point of ensuring that the information in your shiny new medical tricorder is up to date with Tellarites. Okay. Thank you. That's no problem at all. Anyone else for anything else? I can't think of anything. No. No. Okay. <laughs> we'll just continue, uh, we'll just continue in. <laughs> so, um, eventually, the Livingston makes its way to the Cordolan system. Uh, worthy of note, once the research is done, uh, the Major is very much keeping to herself. Uh, she seems to be interacting as little as possible with the rest of the crew. Mm. Mm. Uh, it, Mr. Barron, do you have a particularly uh, trustworthy member of your security staff? I'm not saying have a guard on the door, but I am saying have a guard somewhere within spitting distance of her quarters door all the time. I'm sure I can find a, a, uh, a security personnel who uh, needs to fix something on one of those walls exactly. for the next week. Yes, yes. Lots of tinkering with panels. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I'm not saying to restrict her access, but if she's not going anywhere, we just want to make sure that there's no one else on the crew going in there either. Okay. Uh, yeah. As he gives a look at Bosch. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, I, I will detail someone immediately. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Barry. Medical emergency is accepted, of course. Obviously, uh, yes, yes. How, you try and give CPR to a Klingon. <laughs> Jeez, um, don't give him any yeah, ideas. That cool challenge. <laughs> yeah, don't don't give him any ideas. He may stop her heart just so we can give her CPR. <laughs> are are you telling the major that you're arriving in the Cordolan system? Uh, as we arrive, yes, I think it is. Yeah. <clears throat> Suspicious as this major. I mean, this is a major, just like you know. General von Steuben wasn't really a general, um, but uh, yeah, we will we will still be polite, and um, at least we'll keep up the appearance of um, not suspecting. So yes, uh, as we arrive in the system, I will uh, message uh, yeah, internal comms major. We're uh, arriving in the Cordolan system. I'll just leave it at that. I won't invite us to the bridge. I'll just say that. See what she wants to do. Uh, she responds that um, understood. Uh, she has some additional research to do from this end uh, please keep her appraised of the situation and uh, she will uh, come and join you when appropriate that's fine that's exactly the response I was hoping for uh, we, uh, we continue into the system <laughs> Okay, uh, so as you arrive in the system, um, do you want to conduct an initial sensor sweep? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Davok, initial sensors, please uh, scan, especially our newly named planet. Is that what it sounds like? <laughs> yeah. Does it not? Of course it does. <laughs> it does now. That's canon. <laughs> We, we need a Star we know Trek scanning for life form sounds like. <laughs> do, 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 do. Um, so this yeah. is going to be. Uh, by the way, we are entering a new act and new scene. So no momentum. Bye bye momentum. Bye bye. A box scan really well. Threat right. resets as well. This is a reason and science task assisted by the ship's sensors and science difficulty zero. Mm. Yeah. Uh, so, who's going to roll for the ship? I, will, I can do that. Um, oh, this is a ship, isn't it? Uh, I rolled so a three you... and a five. Oh. Uh, Sensors and science are when I find sensors 11, so that's two successes. Uh, oh no, it for the assistance, it's one roll. Oh, I rolled so, a, a five and a three, yeah. So one of those is a is a success. Um, okay, and then for yourself, uh, reason and science. Oh, I I just rolled for me. I, I'm sorry. I oh, that's right. What we that were was doing. yours. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's what I say. Who, who wants to roll for the ship then? Uh, I'll chuck one in for the ship. Okie dokie. Uh, yeah. Don't so, fail what me did now. I say it was uh, 11. Uh, it's an 11. It's an 11. Uh, so, with three successes, you get three oh. momentum. Um, and I can tell you information that was not in the database. The Cordolan system contains 12 planetary bodies. Uh, the five outer planets are frigid class K worlds with methane and nitrogen atmospheres. Uh, these are followed by a class Y planet and three ringed class J gas giants. Uh, the three remaining inner planets are class H worlds with temperatures hostile to humanoid life. Uh, and the gas giant Cordelin 4 contains 24 rocky and frozen moons and the mining outpost as expected is on the sixth moon. 
Okay, uh, this might be a good point to remind our chief science officer that you have um, an ability here. Um, when the science officer succeeds at a task assisted by the ship's computers or sensors, the character generates one bonus momentum, which they can be used on the obtain information momentum spend. So essentially we get our three, you get an additional one, which immediately burns, and we can ask you for more obtain information, please. Mm, very good. Okay. Uh, the diamagnetic field coming from the moon, which you expected, is stronger than you expected. Mm. Mm. Does that seem natural, or does that seem like it's amplified on purpose? Yeah. It's hard to tell. It's an excellent question, but it's mm. hard to tell. Are you able to scan the diamagnetic field itself and get any more information off that? Uh, scanning the field itself, that's an excellent question. I'm going to say no because it's something that interferes with the scan. So if you, it, it's it off. yeah, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's not really. Yeah, scanners yeah. aren't picking up anything. So would it be um, since scanners are picking up nothing from it, or it's interfering with it? Would we even know it? Would we only know it's there by the, like the lack of information? No, in I mean, a your certain scan section. Your, your scanners are telling you that there is a diamagnetic field. Oh, okay. Um, and that it is a very strong diamagnetic field. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah. Too strong. Hmm. Too strong. Maybe you say that was caused by, too strong. caused by the mining, or is it the thing that they're mining causes, or that they used to mine causes it? Or they're uh, doing it they on were purpose. mine. They used to mine diamagnetic ore. Which, yeah, it, it's a byproduct. So the ore itself creates. Yes, it does. It, okay. But in theory, you would have thought that the uh, if they're mining that ore, the field would be slightly less because they'd yeah, have got the rid of it. Out, yeah, mm. the more you take mm. out, the strong, the less strong it should be. Mm. Yeah. So there's either a bunch of it there, or they're doing something to create the field. I mean, or... I would imagine if you're running a super secret Klingon gene lab. Uh, you mm. might want scanners to not be able to pinpoint exactly what the fuck is going on in your ship. Mm. So they might be taking advantage of it somehow. I don't know if it's Bosch's gut, but my gut says super secret uh, Romulan research facility. Yeah, I also noticed that the uh, Federation Galactic Wikipedia had been edited to the bit that said, this is an abandoned station, had been edited by someone KDF. I don't know who that is. <laughs> uh, ADFROM.com. I don't know who that is. So I guess my, my question would be, do we trust anything we know about this station? Or do we just assume that everything is wrong and that it is fully active? Um, I think we press on a little closer and see mm. what we get. Um, is there any... Uh, actually, um, on our initial approach scan, um, that would also pick up any um, ship traffic, civilian or otherwise, in the uh, in the area. That, I mean, that would just be our, our basic our, TCA, our space TCAS system mm -hmm. would be pinging that. You're you're currently sitting on the edge of the system. Um, you're certainly too far away to to get anything specific from uh, pretty much any of the the planet toys. There's nothing. There's no. There's no ship traffic that you're aware of um, at all. Uh, in order to scan the outpost, you would have to get quite a bit close. Basically, you'd have to go into orbit of the moon. Yeah, to, to scan that. Okay, um, in that case, I shall uh, order our helmsman to um, continue the approach towards the uh, the moon, which we've got a name for now. Um, See if if if, if Dabok had scanned it first, it might be called the Moon Dabok. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need to name him yeah. after me. I don't know. He might he might end up being called Ral's Folly. Who knows? I think that's a good name for a moon. <laughs> yeah, it's more likely, I suspect. 
Uh, yeah, so we'll uh, we'll continue. We'll uh, set course and continue on <coughs> closer to the moon, please. Okay. Yes, uh, all three of you, yes, all three you, of you, arms. <laughs> you get into orbit of the moon without any difficulties at all. That's a like an incredibly basic thing to do. Um, <laughs> and yeah, you can scan the outpost if you wish. Uh, yeah, Mr. Davok, get those scanning fingers going. This yes. is a reason and science task assist, assisted by the ship's sensors and science. It is a difficulty two task Ooh. by the diamagnetic field. Yeah, so that's uh, two dice from Davok, one from mm -hmm. the ship. Do you want to throw another one in to assist from For momentum? momentum? Yeah, I'll do three then. Okay, so what else are we a momentum. And I'll chuck okay. one in the ship. Okay. Oh, it's got to be a seven because the ones are symbols. Oh. Uh, so I've got 13 and seven, so that's two successes. Mm -hmm. I've two rolled a successes. 10. And the second one was a 14, which was just enough. So three successes. Sorry, your first one was a. So I've got a 7, a 13, and a 14, and I needed to get 14. Okay. Cool. Two successes. Uh, and and the a ship. 10 from the ship, please. So one extra success here. And uh, three successes. So you get Four successes. momentum back. Mm -hmm. uh, no, the momentum was used to buy Amy an extra dice, I believe. Yeah, and I got... Oh, was I only rolling one in the first place? Uh, oh, two. Also... Yeah, I rolled three dice, two. I got three successes. Yeah. Yeah, so that, uh, that's where the momentum came in, was to, to buy the extra dice. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, so, with your successes, um, I can tell you, and of course you get the extra burn of information as well. Mm -hmm. So you're getting uh, lots of information. Uh, I can tell you, the outpost antimatter reactor is currently operational. Sensors indicate multiple life signs. Uh, because of the interference, the scans are having difficulty providing additional details about them. Mm. Uh I can tell you, however, because of your burn of information, uh, that while the interference is naturally occurring, it has in fact been artificially boosted. Oh. No. Mm. Uh, you can spend another momentum to get more information if you like. Yes. Okay. How many momentum do we have currently? Uh, you now have two. Uh, the life signs is the static on the sensors just clears up just for a moment it does suggest there are multiple Romulans it's impossible to tell how many there is a Klingon and this will intrigue Captain Rahl there's a Trill oh <laughs> the outpost. What? There are also other unidentifiable life forms. Ooh. Can we scan specifically for the parasite now that we have its signature? Not through this diamagnetic field. No. It's too fine of a scan to get yeah. through. Mm. Is it worth opening communications channel and uh seeing who's down there and who answers back it's an whose outpost. outpost should this be it's okay it should be an, an it's an abandoned outpost. klingon mining outpost from a hundred years ago so we should expect the klingon to answer hmm. well you shouldn't expect anyone to answer it's been abandoned mm -hmm. for a hundred years hmm. So this isn't like a sanctioned outpost that we're going to that we know of. I mean, I guess the question is, we can scan them. Do we presume they know we're here? If we have to get in the orbit to scan them, I assume so. 
I mean, a mining outpost. How how much? You know, how much do they? They may have. They will have basic communications. And they're doing what we they think they're some, doing. They probably have some high tech equipment on there. Yeah, I, I said they probably know that we're here. So we need to make it look like we don't know what we don't we don't know what they're up to. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But the, the <laughs> that they, that we know that they know that we know. Yes. What are our rules of engagement yeah. with this? What... <laughs> Generally, we we don't really know what they are up to, but uh, we know more than we are going to let on that we know that we don't know. Exactly. So my thinking, my thinking is to open communications in the, hello, is there anything, anyone down there? Anyone need any assistance? We're in the neighbourhood just in case you need us. We know what you're up to. We don't really know what you're up to. One thing to mention, though, is I imagine that what's affecting our senses is also affecting theirs. So we might be a bit more hidden than we think. Mm. Hmm. Interesting call. Is you know it? What? I think we're going to. I think for the moment we're going to play it coy. I don't think we're going to on communications because uh, if it, if it comes back to bite us later on, why didn't it communicate? We can always say that we yeah. did. But maybe the, maybe the interference got in the way. I'm thinking this might be <laughs> this might be a decision that we need everybody for to figure out how to do this. Like, what do we do? Hmm. Can we beam through a diametric field? It is possible uh, to transport through one. Um, it does have its difficulties, though. Can we just can we just beam the the one Klingon to our ship? <laughs> just be like, what the fuck are you doing? You got interested to beam that trill on board and say, "What? Yeah. What are you doing?" Exactly. Mm. Um, or who who are you? Um, actually, can uh, would that inf would that scan information give us any indication whether there are any Federation com badges down there, or whether we're just picking up life signs? There was nothing like that. I mean, literally, you were getting a load of static, then it just cleared just for that briefest of moments, and went okay. again. No, um, we we wouldn't be able to lock on to anybody down there and pick them up, but we could potentially beam down to that area. Mm, exactly. Yeah, and it's sort of like a it, it's a it's a one way door uh, for the moment. Well, that's not helpful in getting off of that station if we need to uh, in a hurry. Well, for getting off the station, um, a couple of options would be open. One is you you believe that um, removing the amplification of the diamagnetic ore will definitely make transport a lot easier and you can also take transport pattern enhancers with you as oh, well yes. if you want to spend momentum oh. yeah oh, is, that, that's in a set of three isn't it and you uh you set them up in a triangle yeah, yeah correct that teleport boosters um or is uh, taking a shuttle down there an mm -hmm. option where that would bypass the problem altogether it it's certainly an option um it wouldn't it comes with its own set of difficulties because um and certainly as a as a as a skilled pilot Raoul would know that uh, diamagnetic oil it's it's pretty much like flying through an electrical storm mm, yeah it's like um, a you know storm it affects the shuttle obviously. sensors um it can cause a bit of turbulence it's not impossible Hmm. I'm thinking. Hmm. I think maybe Bob's idea of pattern enhancers I'm, might be better. I'm I'm going to make this a little um, easier for you. I can tell you that to transport, you first of all need to adjust for interference to sensor lock. Uh, that's going to be a difficulty too. Uh, and then you need to would need to transport your away team down, which would be a difficulty three. Taking a shuttle, uh, plotting the course is a difficulty two, and then piloting the shuttle is a difficulty two. Hmm. Shuttling down there is going to be easier, but um, that would be a job for me, and I'm kind of stuck in the chair for the moment. Uh, because of the inhospitable nature of the moon, if you took the shuttle down in order to get from the shuttle to the outpost, you would need EV suits, mm -hmm. which would require momentum spends. Mm -hmm. I think uh, Mr. Bosch's suggestion of teleport and uh, pattern enhancers is probably a better option. Even though it's a more even though it's a more tricky uh, task, we do have a particularly 
skilled engineer who's already beamed us and other things on and off moving objects quite well already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, should we take excess security? Um, I think this might be one to um, take Reggie down with uh, again because uh, he's not going to let Bosch go anywhere that might be dangerous without tagging onto him as well. He li There's not many Ferengi he likes, but he likes that one. Are we sending Ooh. Bosch down? That's up to you. Well, it's up to the leader of the away team. Hmm. Isn't it, Mr. Varon? Mm. <laughs> Bosh, do you have uh, any objections to going? Uh, no, it just is whether or not... Uh, I mean, in theory, this is a extremely hostile environment. Um, there may be use for uh, sort of medical backup it, it depends whether or not you're planning this away mission as a uh, let's grab someone. Is, is this a, a retrieval of personnel to see what's going on? Is it a surreptitious retrieval of data uh, to try and get in and out? Or is it a full confrontation? I, th I, well, think, this, I think this keeping is a continue, confrontation continue to a minimum. Mm -hmm. It's a continual investigation, isn't it? We don't want to be yeah. overly... Our, our rules, <laughs> our, our directives from the Admiral are not to go in all guns blazing unless necessary. Yeah. Um, Unfortunately, I don't know that we we're going to get a choice in that. Hmm. We still don't have enough evidence as to what exactly is going on. This is just where the trail has so far led us. As far as the away team would go, I would say retrieval of data and information would be top priority to where we can submit data to Janeway and then figure out further orders from there. Uh, that would be my best bet. How we go about getting the data is, I would imagine, would be up to the captain, whether it's espionage, stealing data from a room that is unoccupied or trying to take data that way or confronting them in person. If we confront them in person, I have a feeling or I don't have a feeling, I have a fear that it'll turn into the Oberth all over again. Um, beckoning Mr. Varon into, a, into the corner for a moment, I mentioned to him that um, it's my intention to invite the Major down on the away team. And I think it would be worthwhile having some extra protection for our own staff, as that well was... for her, if that be the case. That was going to be my suggestion as well. Bringing Reggie as well as the Major um, and then whoever Davik and Bosch choose from their teams or themselves would make me feel more comfortable. Mm -hmm. That's it again. Actually, yeah, that's, that's my, if, uh, if Bosch would like to send uh, one of his medical staff down and coordinate from up here, that's also uh, definitely yeah. an option and works within the game as well. Yeah. Same with Davik, if she wants to come, I'd be happy to have her, but if she wants to send <laughs> a, a lackey. <laughs> Excuse me. I think uh, Davik expects it is going to be quite difficult to gather the data, so he'll probably need to go down himself. Okay. And, and uh, Bosch was more of a case of, do you want to take medical personnel or do you need additional security staff to, uh, to deal think... with things? I think myself and the first I, officer will, will go with um, an additional security staff would just be uh, advisable here. Okay. So not we bring Bosch extra, and bring... We do have the extra medical and xeno, xeno, uh, xenobiologist support from the Major. Um, okay. As well as Bosch's medical ability. So I think that way we're pretty covered. And Reggie's not bad with a spanner. No. So the team is going to be weapon or fixing things, by the way. So, so is that Bosch is going, or we're bringing an extra security besides Reggie? That's your choice. I was... Oh shit! <laughs> uh... Yeah, first officer. Uh, you guys suck. <laughs> this game blows. Oh, um... <laughs> This, this is actually a part that I've, I've now sort of realized and I really like. It's like, yeah, you decide. I, I'm quite happy to pick up any yeah. any character to go through. Yeah, this is really interesting. 
I think. Have you noticed Baron's doing the Kirk lean? Yeah. Mm. I uh, I want to I want to ask Roll something privately in in her ready closet. Um, <laughs> Love it. Uh, can we trust the xenobiologist to be on our side at all times, or would it be worth it to take Bosch down just in case there is a confrontation and the xenobiologist is no longer on our side? Um, I trust Bosch's opinion on something more than I trust uh, a Klingon who we have apparently no record of them being sent by the Klingons. Bosch it is then. Uh, yeah, so it'll be Reggie, Bosch, Davik, myself, and um, and Kira. You're going to invite Our major ma- major D bag. <laughs> You're going to invite major D-bag. major Kira. I think yeah, I I, I I think I think her knowledge of xenobiology and the fact that she is caught up in this up to her neck hole. Uh, we. I'm more curious what she will. Not what we're going to learn with her, but more what we're going to learn from her just reactions to all this. Just by observing her interactions instead of getting specific data off of her. Mm-hmm. She was so, always going to be part of the away team down to this uh, this outpost. Yeah. In which case, I would always invite her. Whether she decides to come or not is up to her, but uh, the invitation is always there. In which case, we may have to leave that till next game, because if that's our team. Funnily enough, um, (laughs) we've hit that time (laughs) where, yeah, Mm -hmm. you you contact the major, issue the invite, and we find out what happens next week. Alrighty. Maybe not next week. Well. uh, not next, next week. Next time. Not next, <laughs> next week. Next episode. Next time. Next time. Actually, next time. Uh, that's no. something we need to tell the listeners as well. So there will not be an episode in a fortnight's time, I'm afraid. We have to wait a month for the next one, and that is entirely my fault. Uh, I am actually taking a holiday. Oh. Hey. Something I haven't done in a very long time. Uh, yeah. However, I... I is is uh, uh, Ed? Are you streaming something on that day instead? Um, no idea, but I could. Why not? Excellent. Yeah. Well, if you do, I will host it on my channel as well, so yeah, people can find it easily. Um, and what is your Twitch, so people uh, can? Uh, me, I'm uh, as I usually on anything. I'm Twitch slash Firelock twenty two. There we go, fantastic. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, Kira, as well. Hope you're feeling better soon. Uh, we better. will see you here. Hypers- in hypers- a hypers- phrase in the post. Yeah, <laughs> we will see everyone for Star Trek Sundays on Sunday. Uh, and of course, next week is possibly. Uh, a choose your own adventure. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Alrighty. Fantastic. Right. In the meantime, everyone, uh, peace and long life. Bye now. Bye. Bye.